a luxury life on the open seas. The residents of an opulent cruise ship, dubbed the most exclusive floating city on the planet, are pretty picky about who they will allow to be their neighbors. According to one apartment owner, even billionaire Oprah Winfrey wouldn't be welcome aboard because residents don't want the paparazzi following them around. The world is the largest residential yacht on Earth. The ship is 196 meters long and has 12 decks that contain 165 apartments. It has a golf center, a 650 square meter gym and spa, and is the only ship in the world with a full-size tennis court. Apartments range from 3 million to 10 million US dollars. Residents must have a net worth of at least 10 million dollars, and apartments are sold by invitation only. The ship flies the Bahamas flag. It has traveled 641,000 nautical miles since its launch in 2002, the equivalent of 30 times around the Earth. The world docked in Hong Kong earlier this month and was scheduled to visit Taiwan before crossing the Pacific. Three times a year, the ship travels to visit some of the most remote regions on Earth. This year, the vessel has already visited the Ross Sea in Antarctica and Melanesia near New Guinea. According to CNN, stepping aboard the world feels like boarding a 21st century Titanic, such as its scale and grandeur. Well, we all know how that worked out, now don't we? Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. On this increasingly crowded planet, innovators are turning to the sea. Pipe dream no more. Imagine this. A fully automated floating city, free from government meddling, with no laws, regulations, or taxes. Once just a libertarian fantasy, it's now just a few years from becoming reality. On January 13th, French Polynesia agreed to host the world's first floating city, or seastead, within its protected waters. The seastead aims to be a special economic zone that will develop innovative technologies for solar power, aquaculture, and wind energy. Design-wise, the floating city will consist of interconnected square and pentagonal platforms made from reinforced concrete. Platforms will have a variety of structures, from residential and commercial to green spaces, with pricing per square foot on par with major cities like New York or London. The project's initial islands will cost a combined total estimated at 10 million to 50 million dollars and will house a few dozen people. With rising sea levels threatening many Pacific islands, seastead advocates believe floating cities may be a solution. The presence of floating communities could also spark recovery for the region's dying corals by slightly lowering water temperatures in their vicinity. The Seasteading Institute will have to complete environmental and economic feasibility studies, but construction on the project could start as early as next year. Chicago hopes to build floating solar-powered bike path. Mayor Rahm Emanuel is hoping to build a floating bike path along the Chicago River in an effort to make the city the most bike-friendly city in the U.S. The bike path would be built on steel reinforced concrete pontoons which are secured with pilings driven into the riverbed. Each 82-foot by 12-foot segment would be equipped with a solar panel. More segments can be connected to extend the bike path. Energy generated from the solar panels will be used to power lighting fixtures. The path is also embedded with a heating conduit to prevent icing on the surface during cold weather. It also has retractable awnings that can roll out to provide shelter for riders when it's raining or snowing. The proposed bike path would float on the Chicago River between Horner and Ping Tom Parks. It would be free of cars, allowing cyclists to ride on it any time of the day. Each mile of the bike path might cost between five to $10 million. Architecture firm Second Shore, which put forward the idea, hopes to build a half mile stretch of the proposed bike path in a pilot project by the summer of 2017. Floating Paris Gym uses human energy to cruise down the Seine. An Italian design firm has unveiled a floating gym that can cruise down the Seine River using the power generated by gym goers. The Paris Navigation Gym is 20 meters long and can host up to 45 people. It is equipped with specially designed bikes that harness human energy. The movements generated by gym goers is transferred into energy used to propel the gym boat. 
The gym contains augmented reality screens inside that show users the amount of energy that has been sourced from their workouts. The gym will inhabit the river all year long, and the transparent glass can be opened during the summer season to let in the breeze. Although the gym is purely a concept for now, studies show it could be implemented in less than 18 months. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Shipping containers become floating dorms for students. A Copenhagen startup has created an innovative student dormitory that floats on water. The containers are placed on top of a concrete pontoon base and stacked in two levels to create 12 dorm rooms. Each room is a studio setting with bedroom and living room areas. The space in the middle is an open air courtyard and the top level features a small lawn and solar panels. The walls are insulated with aerogel. The temperatures inside the units are controlled by hydro source heating. A heat exchange system draws upon the thermal mass of seawater to cool and warm the dorms. The basement of the pontoon features more facilities, such as storage zones and an automated laundry room. The company claims the structure would not be impacted by flooding, as they will rise and fall along with the sea currents. The rent for one room would be roughly 600 US dollars per month, which is a bargain in Copenhagen. Urban Rigor has already received over 3,000 applications from students who are interested in living on water. Norway plans submerged floating tunnels to make driving easier. The floating underwater tunnel you see here could be the solution to Norway's transportation challenges. Norway is known for its beautiful fjords, the deep inlets of ocean that form between its high cliffs. But getting over one means taking a ferry, and that can add hours to a car trip. Because fjords can be up to a mile deep, building a bridge over the waterway or tunnel underneath is not very practical. Norway's engineers think they have the answer. They want to float concrete tunnels 100 feet below the ocean's surface. This would allow ships to sail unobstructed by bridges. That's because floating pontoons would hold the concrete tunnels in place. At the moment, engineers are crunching the numbers on the ambitious $25 billion project. If all goes to plan, the world could get its first floating underwater tunnel by the year 2035. Floating UFO houseboat to hit waters in 2018. An Italian mini yacht manufacturer has come out with an updated design for their sleek floating villa that's set to be the home of the future. The aptly named unidentified floating object is an off-grid houseboat that's shaped like an alien flying saucer. Twin engines propel the UFO yacht while built-in solar panels plus wind and water turbines generate electricity to sustain the vessel. The 314 square meter houseboat will be made from carbon fiber and fiberglass and have three levels. The upper deck will house the controls as well as a hot tub and desk. The first level will consist of a kitchen and bathroom, while a submerged level will hold the bedroom and another bathroom. Its enormous size means the only way to transport the UFO yacht is via military helicopters. The floating home can be used amid different conditions around the world and is unsinkable even in rough seas. The external deck is customizable and the vessel itself can be used for different purposes, a floating restaurant, gym, even a resort. The UFO yacht is expected to be available by 2018. For now, a Kickstarter campaign is underway to raise 1 million euros to fund the project. Google ships are here. After developing self-driving cars, Google is set to bring its innovation prowess to the seas with a novel new ship propulsion system that uses kite energy. Google first delved into marine technology in 2009, mounting computer data centers on barges and using seawater to cool them. The tech giant's most recent innovation incorporates this technology with an airborne wind turbine, or AWT, that connects to the ship via an electrically conductive tether. The windmill-like kite consists of a number of turbines mounted on a rigid wing and is meant to fly over water at high altitudes. The AWT has two functions. It can be powered to steer the vessel, but can also generate power by harnessing wind energy. 
The ship itself is also capable of producing its own fuel by drawing out carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas from seawater, refining and then converting it to ethanol. With a sustainable fuel and electricity source, moving data centers across the seas will not only be cost effective, but also environmentally friendly. For now, Google is remaining mum on this exciting new technology, despite successfully acquiring the patent for the AWT in September.